Yeah, so um, this is my first time on the call. Well, welcome. Are you new to Super Easy? I'm very new, yes. Uh, just the past three days or so. Wow, you're brand new. Okay, so tell me about you. How long have you been trading? What are you well, I've been trading, for? well, I'm just on the demo account, of course. Okay. Um, and I'm <laughs> down about 40 or so fake dollars. So, <laughs> yeah. That's the problem to have? Yeah. That is not, well, at least it's demo. Most of us were not as smart as you. Most of us were a lot more uh, definitely uh, audacious and, and probably cocky is the right word, although not appropriate. Right. We so we're good on you for actually being smart enough to use a demo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, definitely. And have you done any trading before now? Um, no, no. Just a lot of taking some courses. Um, I took a little course on stocks. Um, and that's kind of how I got into it. First, looking at stock trading um, and then starting to look into Forex and found this. Um, I also was looking into crypto trading. Um, so in your experience, are those things very different from each other or very the same? Uh, from a fundamental standpoint, they're massively different. Uh, okay. So you got to think. So cryptos is still a, a new concept, right? Right. This is a, a baby, so it's technically backed by nothing. Uh -huh. like a conversation, we say that. However, most of us who have been business people or even mildly economically inclined, we know that the U.S. dollar is backed by nothing. In fact, it's backed by negative nothing. Uh, <laughs> right. The, the Japanese yen, the Chinese, whatever, the, the euro, it's all backed by technically nothing at this point. We just like to think for peace of mind that right. it's backed by something. So it makes us feel, you know, special and important and happy inside. <laughs> the reality is it's all the same. And, and companies in terms of stocks, mm -hmm. the big difference there is obviously insider information. Um, right. Most people who have hit it big, they hit it big because of either insider information or enough diversity that one of the companies hit. Right. Because for the most part, you're fishing in the dark. Anything that could have happened, I mean, it, the, the company owners can get a divorce and that company sinks. The company right. can be doing exponentially well, but anything can happen and that company all of a sudden goes bye-bye. So there's right. no guarantees in any of it. We do technical analysis mostly in this group. Mm -hmm. right. uh, there are a few people who do fundamentals, but for the most part, it's technical and right. technical analysis works pretty comparably on most things across the board. Some things better than others, obviously. So. Right. Yes, sir. Um, I, I have another question. Um, okay. So, uh, with I've been mainly using the triple arrow system, but it looks like you mainly use different systems, right? So I've been around, uh, well, for those of you who are on the call and don't know me, it's who are brand new to the group. This is kind of my first class of the year and we've had an absentee kind of few weeks. So I'll give you my kind of short story. I had some reasonable amount of success in other businesses, you know, paid the bills kind of thing mm -hmm. and did pretty fairly well. I do work in real estate. I own quite a few properties as well. But when I first started trading a handful of years ago, I was the person who did very when, well. When you get done talking, I'll tell you. Hey, well, whoever that was. Hold on, let me. Yeah, they gave her anesthesia and meds off. Oh, whoever's got anesthesia, shh. I hope that they're okay, but shh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Jason, you can go ahead and unmute yourself, but I went ahead and unmuted everybody else. So, but to answer. Okay, you, yeah, I'm back. Um, I do a, a variety of things. I love the triple arrow system. And to go back to where I started, I had some sex success prior to coming to the super easy group. Mm -hmm. However, I was the person who made a lot and gave a lot back. So I did make right. some withdrawals, but never the big paydays. Uh, that stuff just didn't happen. So what I gained in terms of working with Pat was first off a family, a family of like-minded individuals who maybe had something bigger in mind than a Maserati. Right. Who, most of us who have made a lot of money, we realize that's not where it's really at. So, but I do use the triple arrow system. I also do structure. I love the daily dots. Uh, I love the EMA crossovers and I like to learn a lot of things. I like to take this accumulative amount of knowledge, this collaborative approach that takes all of it and says, okay, so what's our, the best chance for the highest probability? Right. So in short, I use the arrows. I just use them a little differently. And we'll talk about that here shortly. Yeah. Do you have a list of your rules um, somewhere that would be easy for me to find? Um, easy is, is a questionable individual experience. But yeah. <laughs> um, we do okay. have my rules uh, that some of them that I created myself, some of them we walk through on a call and did it together. And okay. they are in the super easy group. Really familiarize yourself with going through the files in there. So 
Right. The, my first six figures that I made in terms of uh, super easy, in terms of using the arrows and using exactly the system, how I did it, how I stacked my trades, how I took awesome. my profits, and my rules for entry, my confirmations, all of them are in there. So great. Worst case, I'm a little busy this week. If not, remind me next week and I'll dig them up and I will repost them too. So, so they would be in that Google Doc that I uh, that I saw. Uh, that would be a wise place, but I don't. They're not there. Okay. I don't know how to add that file as a link to that other file because it's okay. a link. It's a file link and a file link. Right. So they don't play well together. Okay. But they're they're in the files list under the super easy chat. All right, great. The main chat. So, and it's all there. It's all part of the program. It's part of the original super easy package. And of course, in terms of other strategies, that's all part of the advanced membership um, mm -hmm. for the paid for group. And that's also really cool. There's a ton of videos in there and a lot more information and some pretty cool indicators that we're creating too. So awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about the new system that's going to be coming out next week. Is that right? It's coming out soon. I'm not going to put words in Pat's mouth that I did not hear from Pat himself. So, it's coming out soon. That's what I know. <laughs> Great. And is it very different or is it basically the same, just a little bit tweaked? It's comparable to this. It's a reversal trading, uh, reversal or mm -hmm. how do you say? So reversal or pullback system. So it is a counter trend trading system. Great. Cool. Fair enough. Yeah. Hello, Jenny. Hey, Don, how's it going? Hey, all right. I'm sorry about that anesthesia comment. I just got off the road. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, you're totally fine. I get it. Like, I do it too. We're all human. I mess up. Well, I won't even call it mess up. We do it. It's not even your fault. We're good. I was just I, adjusting my mic. I totally apologize. No, you're fine. I, I absolutely forgive you. People have done much worse. We had a naked guy on here one time. He had his <laughs> camera on. He was taking a shower and listening. <laughs> it really wasn't on the recording, but uh, it was an interesting conversation for a couple months. <laughs> to say. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yes, awesome. Uh, Tori, well, wait, real quick, before I go to more questions, uh, welcome everybody. For those of you who don't know, that's kind of my background story. Tonight, as you know, we have some massive economic news. I want to touch base on that really fast. Guys, before you trust your technical analysis, please understand that our country and the world just hit you know, extreme events. So extreme events are going to cause extreme moves. Those are not going to follow rules. I mean, we can take credit for them. Um, we can, you know, credit the triple arrow system or our indicators and say, woohoo, we knew. But the reality is that's a thousand percent that was economical, that was political, that was not indicators. Please don't go heavy and hard into US 30 and NAS 100 and, and, and all the JPY pairs. We know the second Trump or our president has anything to say. Uh, yes, Donna, I got your message. <laughs> Uh, the second Trump has anything to say, the market is going to retrace the huge moves it just did. So please bear in mind that this big move that just happened, we need to play it safe. If you're smart, that there's going to be plenty of stories from people who lost their entire account. The stock market crashed today. Uh, a lot of things happened tonight. So tomorrow when New York opens, we're going to see some massive moves, things that are going to be a thousand percent against our control. So if you have any pips in the market, please protect them. If you're looking to enter, this isn't the time to go heavy and hard in the paint, as Pat would say. This is the time to be conservative. Yes, there are going to be millionaires who come out of this, you know, war. Uh, war is economically positive for, for, this, for us. But let's be wise and not, um, you know, throw our everything we've got into the basket and then lose our butts on it, okay? So just wanted to give that disclaimer in terms of the news. Secondly, if you have not yet done so, um, I haven't asked before. I'm going to start asking now. Um, if you could please, pretty please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So Donna, I'll be pretty transparent when I say Donna and I are going to start uh, blasting out some amazing content, some girls content, some um, really awesome stuff. I mean, plenty and plenty of hours worth of education information for free, but you're going to need to be subscribed to be able to access that. And it would mean the world. So please do so if you have not done so as of yet, we would super appreciate it. Uh, and next, before I get to Tori's question and everybody else, I was hoping to have a volunteer tonight. So somebody who wants to control my screen and be able to say, I'm going to tell them exactly what I do to chart. Because as you guys know, the arrows in any indicator, I don't care if it's my fancy MACD, I don't care if it's somebody else's cool creation, if it's an Elliott Wave indicator, or even the triple arrows, or even Pat's new indicator. All of these, hey, look at me arrows, 
and all of these, hey, let's do something at this price point, let's do something now, all of those things are only relevant during those certain zones. They're only relevant if they're at support resistance, if they're at an area of supply and demand, if they're at an area where previous you know, structure, where things have happened. If you get an arrow in the middle of like, for example, right here, and you look left and like, there's nothing in this zone, for example, you really shouldn't be just jumping in on that arrow. You want to wait until you have the full retracement according to how we chart and where our supply and demand is, how our support and, and resistance zones, where they're at. So even if you get your arrows, you should really wait until you have it in an area of confluence, an area of structure, because trading zone to zone is one of the best ways to trade. The arrows and any other cool tool you use, silly indicator included, no matter what you use, it's great to, to only listen to those in, in a zone where it matters, if that makes any sense. So I'm hoping that maybe anybody, oh, Jason, perfect. Do you have any experience with Zoom? Uh, not really, but um, I'm pretty techie, so I can figure it out. I learned today, my friend. You ready? <laughs> yeah, as long as you're okay with uh, teaching a newbie. Okay, well, well, let's have some fun. So Donna just posted the link because she is my hero. I'm my bestie there in the chat. So if you have not done so, please do so. We will love you forever and ever and ever. So Jason, um, I'm going to be answering Tori's question as I kind of walk you through step-by-step step what to do. And we're going to play with you, Jay, because, well, we know the Japanese yen is going to be going nuts. Thank you, uh, the guys who wanted to bomb our people. <laughs> but either way, and all the retaliation. So what you have to do is go to your, there's a black bar somewhere on your screen, essentially, okay. or it's on the bottom of your Zoom window that says yep. something on the lines of... Uh, request remote control. And this, this process is gonna bog down your computer. It's also gonna bog down mine. So everything you do is gonna be a little delayed. But as soon as you request that control from me, I will approve it on my side. And then you're gonna be a thousand percent in control of everything here. Great. And we're gonna play. Deal? Um, so I'm looking at the black bar. I'm only seeing like invite participants. Oh, maybe share screen. Uh, no, because I won't let you do what well, I will let you do that if, if the with a different class, different reason. But for right. right now, the very bottom, the very end of that black bar, it says it has three dots and it says more. Mm, okay, I do not have that. You don't. Okay. Anybody want to know? Let's see. Remote control. Oh wait, accept all requests. I do not want to. Ex uh oh, my friend just messaged me. He says it's two bases now. Two bases got hit, so I don't know if y'all are in any of that stuff, but please be careful. Everything's about to fall again, so. Um, who else has requested control who can tell me what it looks like on your screen? Donna, can you by chance tell me what it looks like or how you request remote control from me? Jenny, someone's saying at the top of the screen, maybe that where it says view options. Yeah. Oh, okay. No? Well, I don't, oh, I don't have the view options. I have the dots that say more. So under that, thank you, Robbie. Your name came up on my oh, screen. Oh, found it. Got it. Okay, I just requested. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Robbie. Okay, I'm going to yeah, approve. Thanks. Ready? So you are officially controlling my screen. Can you wiggle around and show me you got some control? Move your uh, mouth. All right. That's you. Sweet. I'm controlling my whole thing right now. So Awesome. As you guys can see, oh, actually, I'm going to irritate you. This is going to feel weird with me touching it. One second. I'm going to hide everything, okay? Hide everything that I've got on here right now. Well, maybe. I'm doing this all backwards, aren't I? There we go. There we go. There we go. I'm going to minimize that. So now we have just basic candles. If I come down here and I press this button, it goes to what candles should normally look like. And these are basic Japanese candlesticks, the most basic form of charting, the most basic form of candle, the most commonly accepted form of candle, just so you guys know. Right. Now up here, um, when you, I have mine set up a little bit differently because I'm pretty comfortable and uh, comfortable with trading view. But if you click on this little drop down menu next to what you guys should see as candles, you have all of these other options come up. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be working with two of them today. One of them is gonna be the line chart and one of them is just going to be your regular candles. So for starters, we're gonna start with line. So we're on the right candle. We can verify that. Everything looks like it should look. And we're currently on the day chart, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's two different ways I was taught to, to 
chart mark up my chart and essentially depending on the time frame you guys are trading off of remember this information is invaluable because when you get those arrows whether it be on the five minute or even on the weekly you're looking for those arrows only in points of interest so think about you know i don't i don't have a really good wise example to to give it to you i'm sorry guys but either way you're only looking to trust any indicator in an important zone on your screen, if you will. So today we're gonna to find those zones. So this is the day chart, what's my preference, the day chart or the four hour chart to find your best support and resistance. And what you're gonna do is find the top and the bottom of the market according to where price is right now. Total newbie who clearly has not a lot of experience prior to now, mm -hmm. um, no pun intended, but I'm totally gonna to milk that. So <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see where you can find it. Show me with your mouse, where you think the top of the market is according to this chart with where it's at right now. Right there. Okay. Do you know how to draw a line? Um, oh, okay. So I would need to mark up the chart. On the so, left hand. Uh, uh, yes. Right. Go up. Looks like a trend line currently. Ah, yes. We'll click on, uh, one second. <laughs> well, that'll work. It'll be a little harder for you, but uh, have some fun with that for a minute. Okay. Uh, so am I supposed to be drawing the trend line? Yeah, try it. Okay. And I probably should have brought it back to there about. Okay. So that would be the top? So I'm going to repress that circle real quick. I've got control for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm zooming out again so we can see slightly more. And that's not a bad trend line. What I'm going to show you is if you click on this, you have all these other options come up. So okay. what we're looking for currently is this horizontal line. Oh, okay. What we're going to look for after that is this rectangle. Mm -hmm. So if I click on here, click on that little baby arrow, we have a rectangle. If I click here on that little baby arrow, we have a horizontal line. Right. So I'm going to try again. Where do you think the top of this market is and where do you think the bottom of this market is on UJ for the day chart? Okay. So the top would be here. Okay. So go ahead and grab your line from the left-hand menu, the horizontal line. Well, I think I already have one, right? Do I just drag this? Oh, yeah, you can do that. You do have one, you dropped one. Okay. Okay, now where's the bottom of your market? So let's make sure that I still have it. Um, I guess that. About, I guess, I don't know if we want to count that, but down there. Okay. So that's where you have the, and those are black solid lines, right? Right. So go ahead and click on your wet red, I can't talk, red trend line you have there. Select, okay, there we go. And delete that? Yep, the trash can works real well. Look at that, you do have a little bit of knowledge of trading, but you're not doing bad. <laughs> well, I've never used trading you, view before, but I've heard good things, so it's pretty intuitive. Fair enough. So that's kind of just your basic, most fundamental, there's your top, there's your bottom, right? Right. Mm -hmm. What I was taught from some really amazing traders who were six and seven and, and beyond figure traders was when we pull up the day chart or the four hour, you're looking for the most recent engulfing candle. That's a bullish candle and a most recent engulfing candle. That's a bearish candle. Right. And if we're looking, if we're going to be consistent, because this is the part you want to write down. So if we're gonna be consistent, go ahead and hit that circle button on the bottom to bring up only what's currently relevant. That circle does it. So if I move around and I fish around a little bit, then I just have to go down here, click on that circle, and it brings me back to relevant price currently. So then there's no question of, oh, well, how many candles are we using or how far back do we go? Or should we make it big or should we make it small? Because we need something consistent, consistent and duplicatable. So if we were looking right here without shifting the chart at all, Mm -hmm. For the highest, most bearish engulfing candle, mm -hmm. can you find it? Or the most okay. lowest bullish engulfing candle? So you're saying basically look for the longest green and the longest purple, right? Okay, so let's define an engulfing candle. An engulfing candle, uh, many different trains of thought, but to sum it up would be something along the lines of Engulfing means it is twice as big as the candle prior to it, okay. right? It engulfs mm -hmm. the candle prior to it. Other, you know, forms and terminology would be something like a momentum candle. Uh, gosh, what's another one? I say it all the time. 
but momentum candle, a powerful candle. Uh, I mean, this oh. one right here is huge. Um, there's also a long one here. And I mean, this is probably about as long. Oh, actually, I don't, maybe I wasn't moving your screen. Okay, so like this one right here is relatively long compared to that one and that one. Yes, right? okay. And this is the biggest one that stands out. Okay. But we're looking um, for the uppermost and the lowermost engulfing candles. So and the, then this green one right here is very long. I would say that I'll go that one. And I would even consider the one to the right there with that big wick. That wick would yeah. definitely, it's not the body. So in all fairness, it doesn't count as an engulfing by proper terminology. Right. But it is the lowest low and it is a, a momentum candle. So but by definition, here's where it's at. So can you draw a line here? With okay. One you found was. Oh, you're gonna have to find the right line though. So go up, and instead we're gonna use oh. the arrow. Yep, pick a baby arrow. Yep, there you go. Now pick the vertical line. Great. Oh, vertical. Got it. Okay. So just draw it next to Wait, that this green one and this one. Uh, go okay. left. No left. It's okay. You can drag it. Left. Left. Oh, how, where you want me to put it here? Oh, where, where's the first first one you pointed out for the down there? Go, it's right about five or six candles. It's a green candle because we're looking for the. Oh, so it is, so it is this one that you're talking about. Nope, it's left. <laughs> it's the first one that you showed it. I guess I lost it. It's okay. Here, I've got the mouse. Okay. <laughs> oh no, my mouth is moving. It's the most weird. Oh. Thing, right? So you pointed out this one, right? Okay. Yes. That is an engulfing candle. The body of the candle is at least twice as big as the candle before it, right? Right. So that is an engulfing candle by definition. And that is the lowermost engulfing candle. No, what I'm saying. You don't invite me. I'm like, so <laughs> oh, you say we can go along. We don't want to hear that conversation for real. Whatever that one was, it's not our business. So, you know, sorry. Got to have some fun with it when that happens, guys. What was that? So, okay, look for the same thing on the very, very top. And this is a little bit in the way, so I'm going to click that off. So some we're looking at the top or most. Well, here, we'll refresh the chart again by clicking this. So what's the, the highest, most engulfing candle? This is a bearish engulfing candle that we're looking for on the chart. The highest, most. Hold on. Hey Donna, whoever that is, can you if give it please message them and tell them to stop unmuting? Okay, there you go, Jason. I'm sorry about that. Donna, are you there, girly? Yeah, I'm here. Watch for whatever name comes up because they keep unmuting and it's obnoxious. I missed it though. Okay. All right, Jason, what do you see there? It's gotta be the highest most one. So look, look, look higher. Oh, Jason, you're probably muted. Sorry, <laughs> I muted everyone. So if you're talking- Okay, to me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's what it was. Okay, yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Like, Great. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm thinking that it's either this one or this one, depending on how long it needs to be. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I don't dislike that. How about that? You were looking there. That's the one I would choose. And okay. why I would choose that one? Because it's the highest- oh, it, it is higher, but I wasn't sure if this green one is- half or more than half it's about half yeah it's about half I, i'd say it's about half in all fairness so let's go ahead and draw a vertical line there great perfect so i showed you now i'm gonna i have to move this uh chat thing out of the way i had to move it because somebody was talking talking talky talky wasn't that a song i know that's a song actually it's a dancey song <laughs> okay so you have the chart so again I showed you how, let me, one more thing. I gotta control all these screens here, people. It's a fun job, but somebody's gotta do it. 
So how are you going to refresh to see the most part of the most recent chart? Once you do, uh, there's that. this right here. Yep. Good job. So now that you have your two engulfing candles, and this is the more complicated way, so we're starting with the hardest. Go to the easiest. It's a great way to be. So now that you have your two vertical lines, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a horizontal line at the top of the body of that candle. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, and horizontal this line. Okay. Yep. Got it. So we're just drawing a box more or less. Well, yeah. Can we change the color on that line? Because oh, we're going to show this sure. for example. To, uh, uh, do I right click it or something? Actually, you see where there's a black, there's black on that little drop down menu that appears every time you draw a line is on the top left of the screen. Oh, this? Yep. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and pick red because you would sell from this point. Okay. Now we're going to draw another horizontal line. Okay. 50% of the, that body, the body of that candle. Oh, okay, great. Some people go as far as to measure the pippage. I usually eyeball it. I'm pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, good enough. Now let's go to the bottom. Let's do the same thing. The bottom of this candle? No, the, the oh, bottom. Oh, yes, the sir. lowest candle. You got it. Okay, so of the green candle, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, got it. And then also, oh, oh, I didn't <laughs> didn't draw. Okay. It's okay. Maybe this one should be green. Let's make it blue for buy. Blue. Okay, blue for buy. You know, okay. red is actually psychologically a negative color, so I usually don't do red, but for conversational purposes, we're going with red today. Ah, that's why you go with purple. I do, and purple and green are kind of biblical colors, so it's... Oh, you know. nice. Mm -hmm. um, all right, and uh, yeah, so green halfway up. There you go. Another yeah. blue, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Fair enough. So now you have these two kind of zones drawn. You see how you have these two areas that you're looking for price to, you know, react out of. Right. Okay. So what I would do is go ahead and drag. Remember where I showed you the little shapes are? It's got a teardrop and a J for Jenny. Yes. Got it. Okay. So remember you have to click that B. Oh, the clicking. little arrow. Yes. Got it. Yep. Go to rectangle. Okay. And now let's draw a zone. So if you start at the top of the line and go to the bottom, it'll kind of just appear right where you want it to. Uh, across this whole box? No, sir. Just in between the two red lines. Oh, okay. I see. There you go. And you can drag it far to the right. Oh, okay. Yep. And then just, there you go. There we go. Make it a color that you like. All right. I actually do like the color blue, but would it be this? Background yes, color? background so let's make it a reddish kind of thing all right let's do <laughs> that one perfect all right let's do the same thing down there on the blue all right so another rectangle and maybe i can choose the color beforehand yes so. get in there now you guys once you do this you can actually make it to where this extends throughout the entire chart. So if you right click on that box, so go back to the box. Yep. Uh, we'll just click on the box, try it with the left. Oh, okay. So I've got an apple, so I got that magic mouse thing going on. Let's see if it'll do it for me, sorry. Mm -hmm. Where's it at? Come on, BB, there it is. So if you right click, we'll go up here to settings. So you can go to coordinates. And you can literally have this go forever. Okay, great. Uh, well, wait a minute, it's only one of them. I did it wrong. I did do it wrong. That's not gonna work. I think it's the top one. Hold on, I'll have to figure it out now. I messed it up for you. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. There we go, that draws us a zone. So if we go to now I'm going to put my foot in my mouth. Of course I am. Because it's public and it's recorded and I can't take it back. <laughs> so we don't want it up and down. If I just want it to continue and continue and continue. Okay, but either way, now we have our two zones, right? Okay. So again, we're going to do this. That is literally all you would do. 
And if you did this every week, it only the arrow. Twenty first, twenty third. Who's that? It was. Hey Nate, we can hear you. Hold on, I can't mute him. I can't. Why can't I mute him? There we go. Jason, you'll have to unmute yourself again because I had to. All mute right, him. I'm back. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to do that, but I can't just mute one person for some reason. It's so rude. Okay. Now, if you notice and you go back in history, that this zone is important. So when you actually get good at doing this, what you're going to realize is this isn't relevant just for today. This is relevant for long periods of time. You'll realize that the the, the zones you drew at the beginning of the year sometimes are still relevant into July and August. Wow. So really, that is all we're doing for one of the forms of charting. So this was taught by one of the people in IML actually. And uh, very, very successful trader. So whatever time frame you are trying to trade off of, if you're trying to trade off of the four hour, for example, mm -hmm. you would do this on the daily time frame. If you're okay. trying to trade off the, the one hour, you'd be doing this on the four hour time frame. Great. And the same rules apply. So just to recap, before I teach him the other way, is you need to make sure you refresh this chart. So you're only looking at relevant data. And then there's no, well, what about this? Or what if I was too zoomed in? Or big difference between this and this, right? Right. Huge differences. So we need something consistent, duplicatable, and measurable. Right. And that that is just a steady on the chart kind of thing. So you're using the most recent, the highest engulfing candle and the lowest mm -hmm. engulfing candle. You're using the tip top of it for the top one, all the way down to the center of the body and the right. tip bottom for the bottom one up to the center of the body. And those are your two zones. That's it. That's Number great. Two. Simple. Think you guys can do that? Definitely. Maybe, baby. Maybe, baby. Okay. So fair enough. That's it. Now we are going to keep this on here and it might be distracted, distracting, but that's okay. I think that we can manage it. Now what I'm going to have him do is we're still on the day chart. Okay. We, he has his two black lines he drew just by eyeballing it. Right. That mm -hmm. aren't necessarily wrong. We have our two zones we drew. Here, I'm going to make this uh, doohickey a little bigger isn't fair, but it's okay. I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to give him back control. Total newbie hasn't traded much. Reset the chart. So go ahead and make it. Can you bring up the line chart? You think you can do that? All right. The Yes, the line chart. Um, well, this is the candle chart. Yep. It is down here. Line. Okay. That's what you think. Fair enough. But the reason why I stopped fussing with all that, finding the biggest candle and the biggest this, this is why. If you simply go to the line chart, notice how your zone is pretty much in the same exact place. Right. So another form of charting is, again, you're going to go to the, high, the next higher time frame from whatever time frame you're looking to trade and find your zones. Those are the zones you're looking to trust your arrows in. Those are the zones you're looking for entries in. Those are your look at me kind of areas. So when you're on the line chart, right now we're on the four, the daily line chart, all you're looking for are the most, the highest peaks and the highest lows and the highest highs. So where would you draw the line? Let's pick a new color, but you can draw a line at the very top peak and the very bottom peak. Okay. So um, now you're just talking about this, this peak and this low, right? For right now, yep. Okay. So um, just drawing, new line is there a color that you'd like well you get to pick a color but it can't be red blue or black okay um let's do a dark green okay uh, up here and i guess i'll draw another one i don't know if i need to select it again yes sir okay and let's pick another color or can it be the same yeah let's make it the same just for okay so it's the same and down to the lowest low Fair enough. So that's literally, it's the same thing. Do you guys right. see that? Now that eliminates the guesswork of, do we have to chart with wicks? Do we count the wicks? Do we have to measure the body? Do we go off of the wicks when we draw a trend line? Do we go off of the body when we draw a trend line? How do we know where to start? How do we know what to stop? If we would just go to the line chart to draw our, our trend lines and our support and our resistance and our zones, this will be a thousand percent easier less drama. It doesn't matter what so-and-so is using for Heikinashi candles. It doesn't matter what somebody's settings are for the Renko. This is a consistent 100% across the board, zero guesswork. 
Now it's, it's not gonna catch every move and we'll show you why now that we're gonna zoom in a little bit tighter. But again, we're, we're gonna keep the chart so we we'll make sure we are refreshed. The chart is not adjusting. So from where price currently is, can you find any areas of current support and resistance? So like, what's the current peak? What are some peaks around where price currently is where price could go to next? Well, I would say that this is the nearest high and um, I see around this area, it tends to be the highs. Well, any, anywhere, anywhere from here, I guess. Um, I guess it really hits this spot a lot. I, I, I love that spot. So my rule of thumb is aside from the high and the low on the chart, any other draw, any other line I draw in between the high and the low needs to have at least two touches. And they need to be peaks, not like that curvy maybe kind of thing. It needs to be two pointy peaks. So yeah, I'm saying this, 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 and this is all pretty close. It, it kind of stalled out in that zone a lot. And remember, it's not a straight line, even if we draw a line. It's not technically a, you know one little price point. Th these lines we're drawing is, is a, hey, look at me area. It could be 10 to 20 pips above it or below it, depending on how fast that pair moves. But we're drawing it as a look at me area. So I like that one. Go ahead and draw your line there. Okay. So I will, uh, green again, or does it, should it be a different color? Uh, whatever you want. So this is in between right. the high and the low. You can maybe do these in between ones orange. There you go. Okay. And, and there's no perfect science, but let's find another. Oh, I like that one a lot. Can yeah, this, this one is the right around there. So there, in there, there, uh, maybe, maybe right here. Definitely there. Okay. Okay. So I need to select the line again. Yes, sir. And I think this is kind of what I'm looking at. Fair enough. Because remember, this is an exact area. These, even though they're just the skinny little lines we're drawing, it's still a zone we're looking at. Okay, so we're on the J chart right now. Those are kind of the areas where we're seeing price kind of bounce off of. So that's, there's two above where per, current price is. Can we find anything slightly lower than that? I'm seeing this one right here. Uh, I'm seeing one that's kind of close. I don't know if that counts. Mm -hmm. um, this little one. Mm -hmm. um, then I also uh, up here see this. This hits three spots for sure. Okay, I'm going to take maybe four. for a second and I'm going to show you where price is currently at. So price is currently here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make this yellow, yellow, yellow. Oh, that did not work. It is not yellow. <laughs> it's blue though, okay? So yeah, that's I see it. Mm -hmm. is where price is at. So we have two forms of support above it plus the highest. Maybe we need to look for some that are below it to see where price is going aside from this big zone. So what yeah. are some places, if this is where price is currently at, what are some areas you can see from there? Well, I see, um, I think this would be its support. It would be its nearest support. Okay, so let's draw an orange line there too. Okay, got it. Yeah, there you go, maybe one other. Then I'm seeing a resistance around here. Yep, that's Or awesome. maybe it's even stronger right here. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, these are kind of zones. So right now they're straight lines, but it's just an area, mm -hmm. an area of interest. Okay, what about below where price is at? We've got one form. Is there anything maybe slightly before there we go somewhere in that yeah i would say there okay okay so there there we go does everybody let me go to the chat real quick uh let's see yes odyssey those are pivot points those are you know when you're using the line chart we call those pivot points yes lamar it is recorded dorian there is an archive um and look for the video jenny Remain red or green, lessening all the color fluctuations. Uh, shift candle? Um, no, those are trum candles. I don't use those. If I'm going to use a different candle than regular Japanese, it's going to be Haikinashi is my next favorite, and then would be Renko only on trading view. I don't prefer the trum candles because they have limited data. Uh, yes, this session is recording. Please drive safely. And thank you, everybody else. Okay. So 
now that we've kind of answered all the questions, does everybody see where looks like a fib by hand? Mm, <laughs> no, because Fibonacci moves. Mm. So for everybody on this call who loves Fibonacci, please remember, I'm going to use this as an example because he drew it, not me. So it's all on him. Uh -huh. <laughs> if price is right here, Fibonacci is going to say that from here to here, this is 100%, right? When price gets to here, well, now this same line would have been 60%. When price gets to here, the same Fibonacci tool is going to say, well, this line was 50%. Right. When price gets to here, now the same Fibonacci measurement is going to say that this move right here, this price point is 30%. When price gets to here, I could go on and on. We'll say right. that this was 20% because it's measuring in real time. So in real time, it's all accurate. Hindsight is 2020. Welcome to the new year. Fibonacci is a 2020 tool. It is always in hindsight. If you look at it from a numerical standpoint, there is it's an adjusting tool. So if it adjusts this line, this 20%, this is 100%, this is 50, 60, whatever. It Nate, looks like Nate unmuted. Yeah, that's Nate. Sweetie, we like you a whole bunch. But if you can't figure out your microphone, Donna's going to have a word with you. She's a shark from what I hear. <laughs> um, so uh the uh with the triple arrow system there's the automatic uh support and resistance lines um is fibonacci there another sorry could you say that again do you mean the fibonacci lines or the trend lines there's a different the, AA? the i'm thinking like the daily lines the weekly lines that are the the dots okay those are support and resistance yes when that happens so if this if there's you know dots that appear here dots will have appeared here right for sure. And they'll probably appear here. They'll reappear here. They'll repaint here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes. Um, but you would say that these are significantly, well, it's, I guess when it's manually done, we pay attention to it even more and it's, uh, well, is there something better about doing it manually than automatically? A thousand percent. So, okay. I mean, ready? I want you to go to the store and buy a cheesecake. Okay, mm -hmm. do you like cheesecake, Jason? Mm -hmm. Everybody, does. <laughs> Everybody does. Well, I didn't when I was a kid, but now that I'm an adult, let me tell you. But anyways, so go to the store and buy a cheesecake. And you can buy the most expensive cheesecake that most stores have. You can even go to the you know Publix, which has the best baked goods mm -hmm. ever, and buy their cheesecake. Do you think it's really as good as a homemade from scratch with the perfect amount of grated lime and just that hint of allspice? And I'm talking like the best crush that has like the proper amount of melted butter and the real like granulated sugar. Like, can you imagine, like, I want you to picture or imagine tasting that, that mouth watering marriage mm -hmm. proposal material cheesecake. Okay. Right. You mean to tell me the stuff that they sell at Publix, even Publix, even the best bakery. Right. Typically going to compare to the, the one that, you know, your grandmother's grandmother from Europe <laughs> made this recipe. Do you really think it's going to be the same? Yeah, I definitely know what you mean. There's something personally made, just one of a kind versus uh, just generic, you know, bulk made and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just not the same. So now that we've justified that it's not the same, here's the thing. The reason I want you guys to understand this is because if you get arrows here, okay, in this area where there's a zone here, maybe it's some support here, you're going to know. So example, we have a, a upward arrow coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Ricky, let's make some cheesecake. I know you're Italian. You can cook. You're going to have to cook something yummy. Okay, sorry. Off of the food topic. Actually, my family's in the kitchen real quick just to be on the food topic. My sister-in-law is making homemade calamari. My brother is using my new air fryer that I've been playing with for the last few months to make air fried chicken wings and shrimp and fried zucchini. And it's amazing. So my house smells amazing. And I am in here talking to you guys just so we're all on the same page. Right? <laughs> Okay. Nice. <laughs> now that we're over that though. So listen, if you guys get an alert, so see where price is now, there's a mm -hmm. good chance, especially with everything going on economically speaking, we're going to get a couple of arrows up here. But if we look to our charts and we look left from what we've drawn, this is nothing fancy. There is nothing on this chart. This is naked, naked, naked trading. Okay. And you get some alerts here. So even if our indicators are our, our MACD and all of our fancy, silly stuff tells us, Hey, we're going to start buying. What we need to understand is this little buy for this much 
isn't worth risking your account for. Right. We're waiting for it to continue. We've broken, we bounced off that zone, we retested and we broke it, right? Mm -hmm. So if anything, if we start to go up, we're looking for it to retest this zone. Please don't think of it as a line, think of it as an area. Okay, but we're looking for it to retest this area before it does what? Right. Goes to the next area. Now, granted, this is a higher time frame. Can our pullback, especially with political drama, can, can it go a little bit crazy on this? Absolutely. But when you understand that, truly, truly understand that, okay? Your, your, your amount of losses, your amount of inaccuracies is going to go down exponentially. Right. Because everybody loves the error. Everybody wants to do it but at the end of the day, if that is Nate again, I was going to say, we're going to have one. <laughs> yeah, looks like. Hey, uh, I muted you. Jason, I'm sorry, you can unmute. Hey, okay. don't message Nate. And if he doesn't respond, please remove him. Not to, not to be rude, but this is recorded. Yeah, you, you and it's also huh? You need to give me access to do that. Yes, ma'am. I'm on it. Make me host to do that. Um, I'm going to do that. I promise. Manage participants. Find your name. Um, make co-host. There you go. You are also in charge with me too. Okay. Sorry about that, guys, but we're trying to record this, so we really need you to either be listening, and I get it. I'm not always available. I don't always see it either, but um, sometimes it's an accident, but we have to be honor everybody else who's taking their time out of their schedules, their lives, their families. They're not reading a story to their kids right now to be on here to learn a skill set for their family. So please honor them as much as we're honoring you. Okay. But, but back to this, I know we're always like a squirrel. So, but that's why you love us is we're all over the place and it's funner. Is if we only take signals and, and crossovers and MACD alerts and triple arrows in an area where it matters. So if we got a triple arrow here and we busted through this resistance, right? right. We know we can get this much out of that zone. If we got an alert here, we know that, okay, price stalled here, here, and here. Does it mean we're going to win a thousand percent of the time? The answer is absolutely no. Nothing is a hundred percent. Even when we get a hundred percent, it's momentary before it goes crazy the other way. So right. we want to listen to these things when it's in an area of interest. If you think about it in those terms, you guys will be unusually successful. Knowing that even our, our moving averages, so everyone gets frustrated with the arrows repainting. Yes, they repaint. I was that silly person at the beginning too, who literally almost walked away from the company because, and these are the, some of the best people I know. There's so many amazing people in this group. It's incredible. But I was frustrated. I was like, these stupid things repaint. Like I wouldn't trust this. That's awful. Who cares? You know, I was that person. Mm -hmm. But when you realize that even your moving averages, even your oscillators, everything repaints to an extent because it's all live. And until that candle is closed, everything is still fluid and moving. It's neither here nor there. If you're only taking signals, if you're only taking entries based off of actual zones, so this zone would have been drawn because over over here we have some we have some points. When this happened, you would have caught most of this move. And how big is this move? That's a hundred pips on a very slow moving pair. Not bad, right? Mm -hmm. With little drawdown and little risk. Now, if you got triple arrows here and here and here and here and here, which is probably what happened you would know which signals to take and which to skip. Because as Scott, who's kind of our, um, at this point, he's kind of our expert indicator designer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start calling him that because he's pretty fantastic. But I promise you we had triple arrows here, 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 and here. But the ones that mattered are the ones that are in the zone. And you would have missed all these little losses because most of us would have kept holding, if we're being honest. All these losses you would miss to get huge wins. Right. That's why it's so important for you guys to know that. And Fibonacci is a great tool. It has a value. It definitely has a value. I'm not knocking it across the board. It's one of the most commonly used thing. It's, it's what, 10th on the list after uh, moving averages and Ichimoku and MACD, RSI, stochastic. Uh, so it's definitely important. But just understand it's an evolving, moving, fluid concept. And with that fluidity, if I'm saying that word accurately, comes a certain level of inaccuracy. So learning to find your own place of what's happening is super important. So now that he's drawn this, super newbie, super, not a lot of experience, we're gonna go back to naked candles. Great. You'll notice that this area was massively important across the board. 
And my daughter just brought food in here. I should take a picture and send it to you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks, and yogurt too. Yogurt with cucumbers. <laughs> it's zucchini with dip sauce. Well, yo, a zucchini, did you hear her laugh at me? <laughs> the yogurt with cucumbers, I saw them make that. I'm not entirely wrong. Just so you guys know. That actually looks good. I'm taking a picture now. And then I'll send it to you. It's nice to have my family here cooking and I'm not cooking. That's fantastic. But anyways, does anybody see this? Is anybody having uh, understanding kind of what I'm trying to get at? Because look, by doing it this way, this is just a newbie drawing two lines. Those black lines are still there. The, what, we drew the zones by using what exactly? Who remembers? Uh, the bottom of the candle and the middle of the candle. The engulfing right. candle style, right? Engulfing, yeah. So those are again, are still really good, right? But now look how simple it was just using the two green lines, the top and the bottom, and then look how simple. This one line using the line chart catches most of these wicks. No, it's not perfect. This catches most of this stalling out. This right here is vectoring. When you get three wicks in the same direction, that's vectoring, vectoring. So drawing a simple line using the simple line chart now catches this tweezer bottom. It's catching all of this pretty accurately. Remember I said it's not in the line, it's more of a zone. Do you guys see that? Everybody at all, anybody at all? What do you, what think? Do you think? So Jenny, I have a question. Yes. Can you possibly go back to the line chart? Yes, ma'am. And I know you said triple arrows would have showed up like here, 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 and you said it's based on zones and you said you would have taken I guess missed losses for a win are you saying people who took it here I guess right in here that was not in the zone they would have lost sorry you kind of lost me on that one it's okay can you use the annotation tool on zoom uh what is that so on your black menu bar mm -hmm. there's a little thing that looks like a crayon and it says annotate it will allow you to draw on my screen okay is that it? Oh, no, that's it. All right, let me see if that, no, oh, that's not it. For some reason it's not. Hi, Jenny. On my computer. It's Scott. Uh, if you go up to where you're, the green box at the top center where it says you are viewing Jenny Baker's screen, mm -hmm. just to the right of that, you see view options. Mm -hmm. Click on that, pull it down, and you'll see annotate in, in the pull down menu. Okay. That's my expert. Hey, Scott, how are you? I'm doing all right. I forgot all about the meeting tonight. I did a beautiful walk during the sunset time here. Oh, how was it? Did you take any pretty pictures? I'm sorry, take any pictures? Not tonight. <laughs> no. Well, that's okay. Hey, I meant to message you today. I'm definitely going to get back in touch with you, but um, I'm glad you enjoyed your walk with the sunset. Did you catch any of that? U.S. is being bombed moves or no? Yeah, I came home. I was playing some music with a friend tonight and got home, looked at the, uh, did a quick check of the charts and I saw the message that, uh, I think, was, was it Avery? No, you posted it. Yeah. And saw the gold had spiked up 350 pips and I uh, thought, geez, worth time to be not trading. I know, right? <laughs> Way to go us, but that's okay. We are still blessed, I mean, just pray everything's okay. I know that war is good for uh, us who make money, but it is not good for everybody else. So not good at all. But thank you for showing her. Um, did you see, uh, um, see yeah. our way, how to do it now? Um, so did you want me to just draw in the areas I had questions? Yes, ma'am. This way everybody else can see what you're asking about. Perfect. So you said that there would be a triple arrow, I guess, here here, here, and probably here. And then you said that people who know how to draw up charts, you would not get in at some of them. Were you talking about in just this location in this area? I, you kind of lost do my best. I'm gonna do my best not to move and keep in mind I got this silly Apple mouse, so don't, don't fuss with me if I get it wrong. Oh, there it goes, I got it wrong. There we go. So just so you understand, I'm gonna draw a circle. This one, this one, and this one. So these three, mm -hmm. depending on what trade manager you were using, depending on what you were doing, 
those were, and this is the day chart, mind you. So they were definitely worth some pips in all fairness, right? Mm -hmm. But to learn how to take trades in areas that matter in a zone. So a lot of people have a, uh, what is it called? The Guan supply and demand. It's an indicator. It's an awesome indicator for MT4. But if you don't know what the supply and demand area, if you didn't know that this was a really important zone, this area was, then you would have taken this. And for those of you who held, would have lost it. For those of you who didn't know that there's nothing in between here and here, there was nothing stopping you, stopping this price. It was just playing. Technically, did you get enough of a move to count? You did. And once it broke here, that's fine. But prior to it breaking here, you're fishing in the dark. There's nothing stopping it in this zone for you to trust it as a signal. Here, okay, these are the ones you're looking to take is when it comes to a supply and demand zone, when it comes to a support and resistance zone, and then you have your confirmations, your triple arrows, whatever your eyes see best, those are the signals you're looking to take. And then you're looking to obviously protect your profits, but it'll stop you from taking, one of people's biggest complaints is, well, it repaints, well, it repaints, where it repaints, right? Mm -hmm. So depending on how long, well, you've been in here a while, so you know that, right? Right. And I'm sure you fuss with yourself and others mm -hmm. about, well, it repaints, right? Right. So how do you avoid from taking the, well, it repaints is, I don't even need to go into detail. You know what I'm saying? Because if you had marked it up, you would only be looking if it broke below. You'd only be looking if it, if it's now broke above this point, you'd be looking for it to continue up. And it did. You'd trade this carefully or you'd pick another pair. Okay. Now, in this case here, uh, you may very well have had a wick that came up and intersected with the zone. So reading your candles is important. True. Very true. Come on. So you're basically saying just only buy or sell when it's at the an at area, one of those lines. An, an area of interest. This tells you where to look at me. That's all. So the arrows tell you what? They are not an indicator. They're not a signal. They tell you what? What do they tell you? Place of resistance. The arrows tell me, tell you, what does he call it? He calls it a weatherman. Isn't that what Pat calls it? A possible trade is setting up. A possibility. So we're only looking at possible trades in areas of interest, right? So in this case, it played out in terms of like how many wicks, how many pips it is, because this is the day chart. But we're charting this for the four hour. So you're only looking to take entries where they matter. You want the highest probability entry, you're looking to take them at supply and demand. The supply and demand is the top and the very bottom. If you want the second best, highest probability entries, you're only looking for arrows and confirmation. So we have probably had triple arrows here. This is a double bottom, beautifully played out well. Triple arrows here where it came back and retested it and it's kind of holding at support. This is the kind of trade you wanna take. So when you get this little weird paint here, which probably did paint, let's use this as a better example because these ones, unfortunately they played out. So let's use something a little bit more probable. We had triple arrows here. Odds are we would have had triple zero arrows here. Everyone kind of agree on that. No one's, you know, you know, in disagreement of that. Great. The problem is we would have also had them paint here and maybe even a couple paint here. This one moved too fast with that wick to tell us now we're starting to sell. So how do we know we're not going to take these trades? They kind of happen in the middle here with nothing holding them back. Nothing's going to stop this trend. When we come back and test this previous structure, so think of a breakout retest, you're, you're looking for it to continue in the right direction. You're only looking to trust arrows in areas of interest. You're only looking to trust me, the guy next door, Pat, uh, Elvis, Irving, really anyone, yourself most importantly, in an area of interest. It's using supply and demand, support and resistance to find the highest probability traits. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Do you agree with that way I said that, Scott? I saw that Barbara put the supply and demand indicator on her charts today, and I saw her win that trade. Pretty sure she was listening to me and you, Scott, just so you know. I'm sorry, I missed something. <laughs> yes, I was. Uh, I saw that Barbara put the supply and demand indicator on her charts, yep. and then I'm pretty sure she was listening to what you were saying this morning about only listening, you know, the whole... All right, I yeah, filtering out trades. Yes, sir. So it helps a lot. Yes, I was listening, Scott. Mm -hmm. 
Now, and is that supply and demand indicator on uh, MetaTrader? Or yes. is it, okay. And do you tend to use MetaTrader or do you use TradingView most of the time? I always trade on MetaTrader, but I chart on TradingView. Okay, great. How, how was your scalps today, Barbara? Well, I only took those two because I was a little, I didn't feel good today, but um, they worked really well. Awesome. Small yeah. community, huh? I'm glad that you stayed out for the rest of the drama. That I yeah. Yeah, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we got to yapping and talking about more detailed stuff this morning. Works right. sometimes. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was a great call. It was excellent this morning. I learned a lot. By the way, I've gone through most of the changes to version eight now. That's so awesome. I cannot wait to talk to you about it. I'm so excited. Actually, yeah, I was literally thinking about it all afternoon. I, I got to coffee. I was telling my friend about it. I was still talking about it. I drove home thinking about it. My mouth was whirling with the ATR stuff in my head. It was, it was my, my brain was going crazy. I was so excited. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's how I get I don't want to divert the class to too talk? much, but I've, I've got some other things I wanted to talk to you about. No problem. Hey, when I jump off, I'm going to touch base with my family. And if yours will be up in Arizona time, I'll give you a call. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, I need to make dinner and eat it. But, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> All right. You go do you. I'll call you in a bit or just tell me when you're done. Okay. I'll, I'll give you a ping on uh, Telegram. Let you know. Yes, sir. I'll talk to you then. I probably need an hour. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, William, you have a question real quick. Does everybody understand kind of what we're doing in terms of the line chart? So to go back, I just want you guys to see the most basic, fundamental, simple way to find your own. And then if you want to add it, I've got a couple indicators that are pretty fancy and pretty awesome, but you'll see how inaccurate they can be, how accurate they can be. You'll get a taste for what to trust and what to dismiss. Because the problem is some of us get really good and get really cocky. Um, I'm known to do that a little bit, unfortunately, but you will get so once you win that much, you'll become so overconfident in an indicator that you go to take a very large trade based off of the indicator, giving you some supply and, and, and resistance, some supply and demand zone. And then you have no choice but to uh, acknowledge you should have taken your due diligence and looked for yourself because indicators are not always right. They're, they're still computers and, and they are not us. So the best thing we can possibly do is do our due diligence, trust the indicator, but once we understand how to do it ourselves, we'll understand the indicator a thousand times better and we'll win more. So make less dumb decisions, hopefully, ideally. But uh, William, you can unmute yourself, guy. We kind of do it a little different in these classes, especially in the mornings. We hang out, we unmute, we uh, chat and play. So I don't want to be rude and unmute you. But I will. Let's see. William, are you there? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Sir. <laughs> Sorry. In past class, he unmuted Hello? you manually. We can hear you, sir. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, then. But I just, you know, interested. I'd like to learn how to join your group and everything, you know. I never done signals before, you know, and really, you know, I never did any kind of trading before. I've looked at a lot of uh, YouTube videos and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I finally found one that really, you know, Piqued my interest, and that was uh, uh, Uncle Pete, uh, Doctor Pete, whoever, whatever his name. What you call him, Uncle Pete? Uncle Pete. Yeah, that's I found him. him. You know, and that was the first one I ever even spent any money on out of the out of all the years. You know that I've been trying to learn how to trade and everything. He's the only one that I really spent any money on. You know, I'm glad I found him because I've learned the, the things that I was going through, learning on these uh, videos and stuff. You know, and about the candlesticks and uh, the different kinds of uh, candlesticks and everything, you know, uh, I understood that, but no one ever explained it the way you guys explained it. You know, I just wanted to, you know, let's say that and everything because, hey, this is amazing, you know, what you guys are doing, you know, and I don't want to join the group anyway, you know, your signal group and everything. Well, that's awesome. Well, come on over. It's not just signals. The signals are doing real well. They're not every week is perfect. Uh, but obviously there's wins and losses, but there's a lot of advanced information. There's a different level of uh, camaraderie 
and collaboration. There's a lot different level of people who are just uh, ownership, uh, self accountability. Right. Uh, and you, you did yourself a great service by not making the same dumb decisions I made. Uh, Cause I bought into everything and I kept buying into the $5,000 for 20 minutes worth of someone's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm an <laughs> uh, entrepreneur, you know, doing, um, you know, uh, different things and stuff right now, you know, come into um, like trip, well, I don't want to say my name, but anyway, you know, I've been to a lot of different other businesses and everything, you know, I always, you know, I'm always been into it. You know, I, <clears throat> I started back when um, it was drawing things on paper napkins, you know, it was no internet. It was nothing like that. You know, it was way back. I'm an old guy. I'm 70, I'll be 74, January the 20th. And you're on Zoom like a pro, so I commend you. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, my son, he tell me, so he said, Dad, you never give up. He said, why? I'm still breathing. You know, come on, man. That's <laughs> but anyway, awesome. Yeah. Anyway, you know, uh, I want to, you know, I want to get into the group and everything. You know, I mean, where do I go to, um, you know, like, oh, the other card group? out and just sign up and everything, you know? Oh, the other group is that five on the website? Uh, I'm already in uh, uh, Uncle Pete's uh, class. I mean, you know, on his you know, I'm already a member there and stuff, you know, so what else I have to do? What other? Uh, so step five on the same Uncle P's website. This is just a, so I do the Tuesday night classes. We've been a little haphazardous with um, the holidays, but Tuesday night classes is part of the regular super easy group. And then in the advanced membership group, which is step five on the website, um, if nothing else missed on and she's kind of the, the admin of the group, uh, she can walk you through it, but it's step five on the website and it'll walk you through how to join the advanced membership signals and then the trainings that I do quite a lot. Some weeks are hit and miss, like this week I'll be a little hit and miss, but a lot of weeks I go live every day. Um, we go through new strategies. We have a couple of people creating some new stuff, um, really exciting things. So it's pretty fun and, and we're all pretty personal. We talk okay. to uh, friends, so very, very personal. Yeah, I've, I've been to, uh, this is, I think it's about the third class I've, I've been to and stuff, you know, and it's um, pretty interested, you know, and um, friendly and you know, people having fun, you know, doing what they like, I guess, you know, I mean, hey, this is me, you know, I like this and everything. So. <laughs> like, I'm a cook also, I've been cooking for 30 years, I heard that one guy used to cook there, I've been cooking for 30 years, I mean, you know, pretty much all my life, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, huh? well, I re yeah, I retired off of the um, Union Pacific Railroad and Amtrak and all of those guys there, you know, a lot of these hotels and stuff, you know, back east. So I retired all of my cooking and everything. So, you know, hey. well, then you'll have I to decide, get you know, I got granddaughters to take care of. You know, I'm trying to build a legacy for them. You know, they're not in, they, they haven't even been to high school yet. They're still in grade school. So I'm trying to build a legacy for them. Start, you know, right now. Build them. Uh, I got eight granddaughters. So I'm trying to build a legacy for all of them. No so grandchildren. I see that I can do it with this, you know. So, you know, hey, I want to join up and everything. That's awesome. You have no grandsons, huh? No boys? Oh, no, well, I think I have, let me see. <laughs> I have one long. <laughs> from my oldest son there in Lincoln, Nebraska. I think I have one grandson, you know. He's the only one, I, yeah, one grandson, all the rest, you know, he's got girls and then my son here in California, you know, he's, he got four and stuff, you know, and they all in, you know, youngest one, she's in, I think she just turned 13, she's in high school, you know, she's a freshman and stuff, you know, uh, and then it's got two, uh, two younger ones, one, she's 12 and a nine-year-old, and then I mean, I can't remember. Hey, come on, I got this too many. I have too many numbers. Here. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> all birthdays. Huh? I won't call you out again then, okay? I probably promise. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> all right, then. But I just want you to know, hey, I enjoy the classes and stuff. You know, I mean, I, I, I hope I'm able to keep up. <laughs> well, I talk too fast sometimes, so I apologize. I try to slow down. I don't always speak clearly, but I'm a lot of fun. And yeah, well, you know, I do. <laughs> that's so. okay. Yeah, you know, I'm from Chicago. You know, all of my teachers was Italian and everything. You know, the whole neighborhood where I lived is Italian and Puerto Ricans. Everyone talks fast, you know. So, hey, if you were slow, you got to love. <laughs> so, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, 
<laughs> yeah, so, you know, fast talking and stuff, you know, I come from a neighborhood, you know, where it was like totally mixed and we had fun, but I'm telling you back in those days, back in the 50s and 60s and stuff like this, you know, I mean, this is way for your time. I know this is ancient. <laughs> I'm a baby. But anyway, you know, hey, it's great, you know, great, you know, talking to you and everything. I'm trying to get signed up, you know, in your class and everything, okay? Awesome, William. Will you enjoy your weekend? Thank you so much for coming on. Okay, then. Thank you so much, then, for what you're yes. doing. Have okay, a good bye -bye. one. Okay. Hey, Jenny, this is Lynn. I got a question to ask. Yes, sir. Um, If I understand what you're saying, you mark these up on the daily, and then, like, your top, that top orange line you, that you have, um, not the red one, the orange one. When you go down to the four hour, that is your kind of, that would be like a signal of saying, okay, I trade from the, the top orange down to the next orange or so. Is that what you're, is that what you're kind of saying? What I'm saying is your highest probability entry is a thousand percent based off of only taking, whether it be from me, the guy next door or anyone else, okay? Whether it's from our arrows, can one moment, can I help you, Bubba? You're distracting me. <laughs> I'm taking your plate, oh. I'm cleaning up after you. Thank you, I, I appreciate you. I was gonna be a waiter. You were gonna be discreet, but I'm not so good at being discreet, so he came in here. <laughs> uh, everything was amazing, and I kind of ate it discreetly. Oh yeah, it was Calamari, good. Calamari, zucchini, shrimp, Yes, else? that, all of that. <laughs> the yogurt she made is amazing. Sorry, my brother's being very loving. He's, he's an <laughs> awesome guy, so. Okay, but anyways, what I'm saying is that when you take a signal, so remember, this is the day chart. This is just yes. to give you an idea. There's, there's a bajillion ways to skin a cat, lots of people who can do it differently, right? Who, who do do it differently. But yes. you can do something comparable to this. So if you're only taking signals based off of, or the arrows when it hits these major zones, your probability is going to go from that 70 to that 90%. If you're only taking triple arrows based off of it hitting and or breaking what you know to be a known form of support and resistance, your, your probabilities, your accuracy is going to go from 50 to 75%. And don't trust me, please, for the love of God, do it yourself. So take your signals, write down what you changed and only change. So in order to track progress, right, we have to do the same thing the same way for, you know, a month, yep. but we could do two weeks if you guys are super impatient, which most people are. So just change this one thing for one month and then message me, message me and tell me how much it improved your accuracy. So if you okay. only take the, the signals based off of when it hits support and resistance, when it hits a zone that you know is a reject, a rejection zone, when it hits a zone, you know, is significant in market structure then your accuracy is going to increase increase exponentially depending on where you're at obviously your time trading your skill set what you're trading there's a bajillion other variables but that's a great example okay so so like what you're saying then is like when i draw all these lines on like say the orange lines in my that would be what i'm saying for myself that's a zone that i'm thinking is probably a a, a good spot so then i'm looking at that price to bounce off of that line which would be saying that's a probably a good chance that it's going to go up or if it hits it's going to go down yes have you um, read the okay. book, trading, um trading in the zone yep okay so we know that if price breaks you know structure and no this isn't always the case you can see yep. that this is yep. an example of it not being the case but we know that if it breaks through we're looking for it to go to the next zone and if you go back and test that so don't listen to me Go back and pick your three favorite pairs and test how often that happens, how accurate that is, how consistent it will be. Go find that out on your on your own. And then okay. when you find that with something like our triple arrows, which is kind of programmed to be zigzag, Elliott wave, and, and other ways um, that's proprietary. But if we know how it's programmed and we're only taking the best of the best in the best of the areas, you're going to have the best of results. Okay. Because I'm, I mean, I have the triple arrows. I've had some good results and then I've had some that I'm like, what the heck did I just do? Cause it didn't make sense. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out, okay, I'm trying to go from zone to zone or going from uh trend line to trend line. Um, sometimes I've got good results. Sometimes I haven't. So that's what I was trying to, that's why I'm asking. Do you know how to take your trade that you open and then drag it and place it on your chart? What do you mean? 
No, I don't. <laughs> and, and, and that's okay. A lot of people don't know this. So like a lot of, when you go to your MT4 and you pull up your account history on the very bottom, and if you come to my class and you're okay. willing to be transparent, you can show your screen. I okay. probably will lo learn a bajillion percent more by participating than you will just listening. So what you would do is go to your account history, literally okay. drag and drop that entry, that, that win or loss onto your chart. Okay. And you get a chance to, it'll pull up some really tiny arrows, a little hard to find at first, but once you're familiar, you'll know what to look for. So. Okay. Well, the one, the triple iron I have right now is on um, a live account that I don't trade. I'm not trading right now until I want to learn the system. I want to, you know what I mean? Can you share your screen? I don't have it right now okay. on this, mm -hmm. on this computer, but I, I had, I was having trouble. I had downloaded another or had another, um, trading company that I was with, uh -huh. um, trading demo. And for some reason, I don't know if it was my computer or what, but I've had to, um, uninst uninstall and reinstall it back and then have to email back to you guys and say, Hey, I have to reinstall the arrow system because I had to delete everything and start all over again. And so I said the last time I was only going to do one, but I could, I can do another account and do some trading again, like I was with that account and see, and then be able to come back later on and show you. Okay. That's fine. All what right. I feel most comfortable being open with. Yep. When we drag and drop your drag and drop your losing trade on the chart, and look, it's hard to be that transparent. I've had to do it. Okay. I'm like a fool in public, but I promise you, getting corrected in public sometimes is the best thing for you. Oh yeah. So when I when I've somebody else has looked over what my mistakes were publicly again. Not easy for the ego, but let's go with that for a moment. What we would notice is, well, wait a minute. I didn't follow the rules like I thought I did. Okay. What we would notice is, hey, I took that in the middle of this ghost area and I was really expecting a buy. There was nothing stopping it, right? Okay. But you'll notice what you're doing wrong. And when you can self-correct, like I've got a teenage son who's got an amazing heart, but someone that constantly comes up is self-correction, right? To be able to self-correct without mommy telling you or the school telling you or anybody else telling you right and wrong it's about you being able to you know look at what your experience is your wins and losses and how do you self-adjust and self-correct to get you from where you are today to where you want to be in six months where you want okay. to be next year so, all right I'll, I'll do that and then uh, uh another uh, maybe a, a couple of weeks i'll come back into class and sh share that and see if you can pick out what i'm doing wrong and you can do that too, I promise. Like you will be amazed when you can be honest with yourself how far we can grow. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jenny. You are welcome. All right, guys, are there any other questions, yeah. comments? Um, first off, I'm gonna say Donna, uh, was that you? Yeah. Who's yeah. that? <laughs> I was like, who's that? Can you hear me? Donna, I thought it was Donna, hey girl. Excuse me. I was just gonna add real quick um, what has helped me when you had um, told me to hook up the um, my stuff to the my FX book to see oh, yeah. what my mm -hmm. percentages. So that, that's very that's very helpful too to actually know you know what you're losing, what you're winning, your percentage, and then you're just like because I was just on and off and really wasn't sure what I was doing until you can actually see your stats. So that I, I definitely recommend everybody try to hook up your account to my FX book and, um, and uh, see what's going on there. It's quite amazing the information you'll get when you realize your accuracy is 70% and you're losing. Um, when you realize that you're 70% accurate, and then you have to be honest with yourself and adjust where needed. And that will just, it'll help you grow exponentially. And that's really all we're trying to do is to get. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what I learned that I thought. <laughs> it's okay, Donna, I promise. I, she was making fun of me today. I was I like, put, no, I know. I, she was making fun of better. me. She was like, you trade today? And I was like, yeah, I traded a little bit. I got 100% and I wasn't really working. <laughs> And she was like, we'll just no, rub it in, don't you? Really <laughs> <good to you. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
but it's okay. <laughs> Some days are like that. Not every day is one hundred percent. Some days stink, and that's just the reality of it. So, um, Alicia, please look up my FX book. It's a pain in the butt, but I can walk you through it. Maybe uh, Donna, maybe add that to our content thingy, and we'll put. I'll make a video on that uh, to how to set it up with the proper yes. way that I did it. Not trying to do all that dumb stuff that it tells yes, you to do. Skip, skip the dumb stuff it tells you to do because yeah. that does not work. <laughs> okay. And and yes, Wazy, please follow up with me in two weeks. Tell me what the difference is. Um, and you don't have to do the day if you want slightly more zones. You go to the four hour. And you'll notice you're going to get a lot more um, areas of opportunity, but you're going to follow those same steps. And we we'll started with the harder way just to show you how easy the easy way is. I did that intentionally because honestly, if we now, and now that we have these lines drawn on there, let's go to any form of charting that you want. And you're going to see that for the most part, it lines up fairly well. So price stopped in this area. This is Renko, by the way, this is a faster version of Renko. So you'll notice that this line was drawn on the line chart and it matches with Brinko fairly well. I mean, granted, this is a little bit of a different time zone. We'd almost have to go to the 30 minute because of how fast this Renko is, but it catches the high, it catches the low, and it catches most of the zones in between. If we go to Heikenashi, I always say that wrong, so please forgive me. Let's go to the daily. Catches the high, catches the low, and catches the most important areas in between. So if you guys just realize how simple it is, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is on a line. It's more of a zone. So please picture it uh, as such. Please picture kind of this big box, depending on how fast it is. Picture this as as big as whatever the weekly ATR is or ADR. So if on average this moves 50 pips a day, picture this box about 50 pips big. If on average this moves 100 pips a day, picture this box about that big. And that gives you plenty of room, or I'd probably do about half the average ADR personally. That's how big I picture the box from where I drew the line personally, just an idea. Again, something measurable and consistent. So yes, Malcolm, I'll make a tutorial because they, their information on there kind of stinks. Donna was like, I'm not getting it. And then I finally hear, I was like, no wonder why. Yeah, it <laughs> That was awesome, though. Um, <laughs> hey, Ricky, I'm sorry I dishonored you. I know that you are the awesome song guy. I'm so sorry. It's been a little while. Um, Rich, I know that you are the Italian who was cooking with the accent in Jersey. I'm sorry that I got you guys mixed up. I apologize for <laughs> dishonoring you. I'm sorry. I just see this R on my screen and go, I go with the flow because there's a lot of names up here. So sorry, just so you guys know. But anyways, are there any questions on finding drawing, working with, support, resistance, supply, demand, the basic of the basic, any at all. Um, Jenny, I want to I wanna help um, Akbert um, just real quick to sh show him kind of like how to, because he, like, uh, even this morning, people were still confused on, on how to enter, even though the triple arrows, you know, were showing. And then you want to show your screen, Rich? Um, actually, I can work on that chart you have right there. That's actually pretty good. Okay, can you tell me what you cooked for dinner? Um, today, um, we had uh, filet mignon. I can show you a picture. I'll send you guys a picture. <laughs> we had filet mignon, uh, cream of spinach, and risotto. I'll send you oh. guys a picture on telephone. Oh, baby, listen You didn't get the invite, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send you guys a picture on telegram. You'll love it. It was really, actually, pretty good. I'm eating pretty good, and I did not cook tonight, just so we're on the same page. I'm eating amazing, and I didn't cook it, so that's a darn good day for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to annotate real quick if you don't, <laughs> don't mind. Don't get this journey. <laughs> I know they're leaving soon. So. All right, Rich, show me what you got. Okay. Can we change to um, candles? I just want to show them real quick. So we're going to go back to regular candles. We're on the day chart. Is that sufficient for you? Do you they want perfect, remote yeah. control or do you uh, want to annotate? Can I draw lines with annotate? Yes, you can use, use, you can use the annotation tool. Okay, cool. Even the... Um, the trend line and everything? Um, it's going to be a little bit temperamental, so would you rather do screen control? Okay, how do you do that? Okay, but you got to request it. Ah, okay. How do, <laughs> I, how do I request it? Okay, so I don't know what your screen lines look, but somewhere up there it says options and it says request control. Hey, ah. Jason, are you still on? Do you still have control? Because I don't think I can give it. Oh, there, I approve you, Rich. Ta da! Now you're good. 
All right. So, okay. So even this morning uh, um, in Uncle P's class, we, we had people asking, well, how do we know when to enter? Okay. So I'm just going to make this quick because as I can see, it's 919. So I'm going to give myself less than 10 minutes so we can get through this real quick. So how do you enter? Okay. As we can see, you, you know, you kind of mentioned that here, here, and here, arrows may repaint. Yes, that is correct. So we're going to take the lowest point. We're going to draw a trend line, right? Which basically covers pretty much the chart, right? Um, and how do we know when to enter? Let's say we were at this point, right? Where this hadn't formed yet. So we want to make sure that we draw the trend line. Now, um, what we're looking for is a break of the last lowest, um, lowest high. So for example, as you can see here, right, the first thing that happened was um, a lot of people, let's say the triple arrow showed up on this part. We had an actual W formation, right? So the W formation, um, how, how do you draw on this thing? I forgot. Like, what do you want to draw? So a shape or a line or? Yeah, so a shape, right? So for example, um, the W formation, oh, that's not it, oh, geez, okay. Uh, okay, brush, I hit the wrong button, sorry. Okay, so the W formation that you're looking for is basically like this. This one right here. Okay, so the one we're looking for on a W formation is just like this. So that's the only way we know because this bottom peak tells you that it's going to keep rising. So if, you, if you're thinking you were going to get in here, that wasn't it. Because um, The other secret I'll share with you real quick is when you're on an uptrend or a downtrend, the market always moves in fives. So we got one, right? Two. That's Elliott wave theory, just to clarify, guys. Four and five, right? So then after the five is when the market will start to break. But a lot of people would have jumped in here and you would have been correct, right? But even still, the market did retest because there was a break in the trend line, right? Your last low swing was down here. So it wasn't until here that you broke the last low swing. So that's kind of like how you know you're ready to enter. So as you can see, a lot of people would get confused on this point. But if you're trying to enter on triple arrows here, here, and here, you're absolutely not in the correct because you've got one, two, three, four, and then you got five. So you've got five swings before you know that the market will start two. Again, the fifth swing is not the actual um, reversal of the market. It's the starting to reverse. And that's why you have this extra swing. And then you've got uh, an equal high. And then you start to form lower, lower, lower highs. So that's how you know when you're supposed to enter at the break of the trend line, the retest of the trend line. And then finally, it starts to go down. Until you break this trend line, you shouldn't really be entering on any trades. That's the first thing. Always look for Mark Wilson. Mark Wilson are the N's and the W's. If you see a W, as you can see here, this is the, the first part of the W. And then the second leg of the W is longer as we drew up here, right? That's what you're looking for. That means that the market's going to turn around and swing up. So if you were to come down on this on the trend line here and you're thinking, how do I know this market's about to turn around? There goes your W. And the same thing, see the mark over here, the Mark Wilson, so Mark M and then the Wilson. So that's what you're pretty much looking for so you know that there's a turnaround. Sometimes you may also get, um, you may get what's called a, um, a pendant or a, um, or a flag. Flag patterns, baby. Yes. So literally that starts to happen. Um, so for example, here you've got this and this, right? That's actually a, a ascending flag, which means that it's going to break down. And then, of course, you have your M, right? Your M is over here. So you, either way, it's going to give you the same, the same um, um, uh, warning that it's about to flip over. But I think, like, I learned this. I've, all I've been doing, you guys didn't hear from me around the holidays because all I was doing was studying. So I really got down to um, naked charts, just price action. And you're... Your um, support lines are awesome, by the way. That was awesome, Jenny, because, I mean, this is like you're giving away a $3,000 <laughs> course in price action. But um, I, just, I just wanted to add to your, to your, um, your awesome um, um, trend line, uh, sorry, support and resistance lines, because that's the key. Support and resistance will tell you, you like, guys, you have to, you really have to pay attention to, to what Jenny said over here. These things over here, right? Um, You've got, you've got yourself some, um, here we go. 
you've got yourself wicks, right? That are just like literally, um, these things never work for me. I'm gonna stop with that, all right. You see this over here? Yeah, this is crazy. They, I don't know what it is with me and circles. They don't wanna work for me. It's okay. Right. It's Work. All right, but you see the wicks are extending over. That means that's rejection. That's rejection. So if you reject it here, right? And remember, this is daily. You got one, two days of rejection, three, four, five days of rejection now, six, seven, eight days of rejection. This is not going anywhere. Plain and simple. Um, but again, guys, don't jump on the triple arrow when you see the, the freaking arrow. You got I'm tired of hearing that every morning, and I'm Uncle Peace Pray. He's got patience of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, because I, if it was me, I'll tell you guys, guys, I've been telling you this for a long time. Stop jumping on, on the arrow. It's not, it's not, that's not the time to enter. It will repaint because the trend is not over. So the, I'm going to just repeat it one more time. The factors to look for is one, draw your trend line. Your trend line should be broken first, as you see over here. And then you should have a retest of the trend line. As you can see, it did climb back up. Rejection occurred at the trend line and then again at the support line so you've got that you know the confluence right once you see this then you know you're ready to enter the next thing you look for is the m so you have a high here for the first leg and then you have a higher high on the second leg here so that's your m pattern which um which is your mark right i know i'm looking like the mark so the mark should look like this right it should look something like that. It's not always going to be picture perfect, but there will be the second leg will always be higher. This is giveaways. That's all it really is. But your main thing is you want to go lower than your last swing low. So if your swing low is here, this is not your last swing low. This is going to retest. This is still bullish, right? Once you pass this last swing low, like it did here, now you're bearish. That's your bearish confirmation here. This guy, what I'm telling you, and what Jenny told you with this support line. This is more than $3,000 worth of education. And you guys are getting this for free. That's the beauty of Super Easy. I promise you, I paid $5,000 for a lot less than this. Yeah. 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 So, Hold on. Donna, Nate has still got some crazy background noise. And I really want to like him, but he's just really loud. I do want to be loving. But it's so, sorry, Rick. I just wanted to kind of like clear that up for accurate. Um, just basically draw your trend line. Remember the market travels in five. One, two, three, four, and then five up here. Once you hit the fifth wave, all you remember, the market travels up and down the um, Fibonacci. Fifth wave, the market's getting ready to turn around. Is it going to turn around right then and there? No. You need those confirmations. Trend line. Trend line break. Trend line retest, your Mark Wilson. If you're on the bottom, it's going to be a W. If you're on the top, it's going to be an M as in Mark. Amen. And then you need, a, like we said, this is your last swing low. You need to break that. Then you're 100%, like literally you're in the, in the bearish market. Now remember, let's make sure everybody understands this. Nothing is guaranteed in Forex. Like, for example, today they announced that missiles were thrown into uh, Iran, Iraq by, by the Iranians. That means that no, no support line, no trend, nothing's going to stop the market from going where it's going to go. That's where everybody loses because you got to be real careful with news, news updates and, and, um, and news you know, for, for it. So and that's about it. Just draw your trend lines, check for break, then, then retest, check your support line over here. Make sure that, you know, if you keep getting rejection at the same support line, that is it. It's going to turn around right at this support line. But your trend line break with the support is where it makes it a strong turnaround. Thank everybody, you. Everybody capiche? I capiche. We got your capiche. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got me. <peace>, so. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Hey, guys, just to clarify, can I ask a question real quick? Uh, so where was I? So no daily that works on any time frame um, miss who asked it in the chat so guys yes the market moves in waves okay elliott waves is five and then the corrective waves are three that is also a theory that's why it's called elliott wave theory uh but we we've all kind of went through this so we know it has to we're not looking at one thing so the m's and w's are fantastic that's market maker method stuff 
but we also know we want it to break. We also know we want that to happen only at an area of interest. So when you compile this level of information, you can put, you're compiling, right, the break of the trend line. You're compiling with, you know, support resistance or structure. You're compiling that with an M formation. You're compiling that with a retest. Now you have all this bits of information to say, woo, we got this. This is really going somewhere. So Dottie, just to confirm, oh, hold on, let me tell you again, your question was a trend line and a support and resistance line, they need to have two or more touches, period. That's pretty much something that's agreed across the board, although there's, again, variations of what people think. So to answer your question, that is two or more touches. Um, you can use something in the time frame. Hey, uh, Rich, your my mouse is going crazy. <laughs> you still have remote control of my mouth, um, just so you know. Oh, sorry about that. No, you're totally fine. I adore you. So um, to the people on YouTube asking questions, hey, Ray, hey, Lawrence, uh, EG, if you're thinking about using AFX, please message me on Telegram. My link is in the YouTube. Um, AFX withdrawals well, no drama. They, they do have very high spreads, which is no fun for scalping, but there's no swap fees or commissions really, so it's much better for swinging. Um, to whoever that person is who asked about the triple arrows on trading view, um, I can show you how to set alerts with the triple arrows, and I can also show you how to set alerts with uh, trading view. Those are separate entities, but either way, that's doable, but he has no interest in trading view, just so we're on the same page. Um, Gamer, do they do not work on MT5, but from what I know, there's a guy, there's a guy that a guy that a guy that I know knows who can put everything you want on MT4 onto MT5. And I have the class on the YouTube on how to do that. So you can also message me on Telegram. Dustin, I feel at least 20% more accurate. There you go. Like Dustin, now pretty please do me a favor, Dustin. Um, Pretty please. Hey, okay, Dorian, thank you. I didn't know that was you. I super appreciate you though. Uh, Dustin, please take what you're doing now, write it down and now come back in two to four weeks and say, okay, this is what I've done. I honest to God can drag and drop prove with actual results. This is what I'm doing. And pretty please, pretty please show me what you got. Because if you are only doing this, like Rich said, and he's, he's right, like especially if he's studying, he knows. And people charge like five grand for like way less than this. And seriously, it's really not special. You don't need a PDF. You don't need a bajillion things. You just need some basic rules and, and some common knowledge accumulated together to make this one pretty little bow to make good decisions. That's all. So, and a lot of that stuff is in the videos. It's in all those videos in that archive. So go back and watch them. So any other questions, comment? Yes, Rich, over and over and over, baby. Yes. Any other comments, questions about Please this? About that time. I knew you were coming, Donna. I knew you were coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liz, about yeah. That time. <laughs> yes, Liz, you can message me on Telegram. Uh, my link is in all the groups, but you can message me there. Mind you, I'm going to be in and out of town for a couple of days, so give me a chance to catch up, in all fairness. My name is Jenny. What's your name, Solomon? Well, whose name are you asking for? You should know my name because you should be in here. But I think you should know my name in theory. I mean, everybody else says, yes, that's Jenny my name. on the block. <laughs> yes, that song. Let's put on some J-Lo. Come on, old school stuff. That's pretty awesome. You cannot just... You cannot... But okay, I'm going to cut that short. Um, welcome, Solomon. I didn't know you just joined, so welcome to the family. I super appreciate you. I, I got to mute everybody because somebody's like crumbling some weird stuff up, and I want to like you, but I just don't know who's crumbling paper in our ears. So uh, thank you, Jason, first and foremost, for being brave enough where others are not always brave enough to come out and hang out and actually like participate and be super bold. So I can promise you his name will come up in six months. He'll be one of those people who either disappears or is helping out a lot. He's going to disappear because he made a lot or he's going to help out a lot because he that's who he is. But either way, he's going to be somewhere in six months because you can tell. And thank you, Rich. As always, you were a delight to work with and a trip. And I'm going to want to see evidence of your amazing meal. Just saying, because, well, that's how we do it around here. Um, 
as for anything else, this is recorded, is on YouTube. If you're not yet subscribed, please, 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 you can borrow my car. Bye. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, the YouTube is in the, the channel. Um, it's in this oh, channel. Yeah, Jenny? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Just put Jenny in the um, oh, YouTube I search to come up. If I was that famous, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> No, I <laughs> Jennifer Baker will show up. We're gonna change. Yeah, okay. But yeah, it, right now Jennifer Baker does work. Maybe Miss Donna can post the link. Please rewatch this. If you are not yet subscribed to that channel, um, we have officially decided we're gonna start asking for those likes and subscribers because, well, we've got some big things coming. We're gonna start, you know, teaching some more cool stuff and doing some more cool stuff. So. Um, we look forward to your support and, and getting a chance to help, you know, make a difference in your life and your trading and hanging out. So, but I'm getting off now because my family is here and I kind of adore you, but have a great night. Thanks for jumping on guys. Okay. JB, have a good one. Good night. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night, Rich. Good night, Jason, yeah, Donna, Barbara, Scott, good luck to everybody. All right. Good night, Jenny. Thank you, Rich.